Number 17, letter A. If a 500 milliliter glass beaker is filled to the brim with ethyl alcohol at a temperature of five degrees Celsius, how much will overflow when its temperature reaches 22 degrees Celsius? All right, so here's just a little picture, right? We have a certain volume of ethyl alcohol here. It's 500 milliliters. And the uh, coefficient of volume expansion, beta sub A, the A's for alcohol, is this value. We know that whenever a fluid changes temperature, its volume will also change, okay? Now, we have to figure out how much of this volume in here will overflow. Well, the first thing is we know that it's filled up all the way to the brim, right? Meaning the, uh, uh, the top. Uh, this actually reminds me of uh, being back in college. I was working in a lab uh, with my lab partner, and he goes and he reads the instructions, and he comes back to me and he says, Andrew, i got to fill this beaker up to the brim. But where's the brim? I was like, what? And that's when I knew I was on my own. Anyway, um, so we know that since it's filled up to the top, we know that whatever volume uh, this expands by is going to directly overflow, right? So really, I'm finding the change in volume that will equal the amount that overflows, okay? So knowing that, I realize I have that variable over here in this formula. So I realize that the change in volume of a liquid, in this case we're dealing with alcohol, will be equal to the thermal uh, coefficient of volume expansion of that alcohol multiplied by the initial uh, volume of that alcohol multiplied by its change in temperature. Remember the change in temperature is always final minus initial, okay? And we also do know um, that whether you use this change in terms of Celsius or Kelvin, it's actually going to be the same. All right, uh, regardless of if you do both or have both temperature units in Celsius or both temperature units in Kelvin, the difference between the two will always be the same. So it really doesn't matter what you plug in here, just FYI. Anyway, so now all I need to do is just calculate this. So we have that the change in volume of that alcohol is going to be equal to the, the uh, beta value, right, which is 1100 times 10 to the minus sixth multiplied by then the uh, initial volume. Now they told us it in milliliters. You can actually leave it in milliliters here um, or convert it into liters. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna convert into liters, all right? And then multiplied by the change in temperature. So that's the final value of 22 degrees minus the initial of five. Now it doesn't tell me what units they want specifically for the change in volume, so this should be acceptable. So let's plug that in 1100 times then, well, 1100 times 10 to the minus six times 0.5 times then 22 minus five. And we get a value of about uh, zero point, so it's gonna be 9.35 times 10 to the minus three. And that will be in terms of liters. If you gotta find milliliters, just multiply this by 1000. Obviously that becomes about 9.35 milliliters. All right, so that takes care of that. That's for letter A here. Oops, one second. So that's for letter A. And then they want us to do uh, letter B now. So I'll write that down here, letter B. And it says how much less water would overflow under the same conditions. All right. So instead, what they're basically saying is that instead of this being ethyl alcohol, it's now filled with water, all right? So it wants to know how much less water, right, would overflow. So basically what they're asking us is they want to find the change in volume of the alcohol. Remember, this is the amount that overflows for the alcohol that we stated before, okay? And that's going to be then subtracted by the change in volume of if that beaker were filled with water then, all right? This difference between the two will represent how much less water would overflow, okay? It's basically asking for the difference between the two. So I already have, right, I can expand on both of these equations. They're both going to be, actually, I should highlight this one over here on the right. They're the same thing, but the code, you know, the subscripts are different. So both uh, formulas will involve uh, this uh, set of variables with their corresponding subscripts, right? So this will be, uh, this will be the coefficient of thermal expansion for alcohol times the initial volume of that alcohol times in the change of temperature of that alcohol, minus then the coefficient of thermal expansion for the water, times the initial volume of the water, right, multiplied by the change in temperature of the water, 
Okay, and this is also for alcohol. We realize though that there's going to be uh, that the units are the same here. Or I should say the values are the same, right? The initial volumes are both the same because it's the same beaker. The change in temperature is the same because it's under the same conditions. So we can reorganize this formula to be or look something like this, that the uh, initial uh, volume, which is the same for both, multiplied by the change in temperature, then multiplied by the thermal coefficient of volume expansion for alcohol minus that of water. This would be then the final formula. All right, if you wanted to just, you know, condense the units uh, or condense the variables there, simplify it a little bit. So realize that it's just going to be a function of the change, basically, in uh, beta. So all we have to do is now plug in the values. The initial volume here uh, was going to be, uh, again, I'm going to do it in liters, so 0 0.5. The change in temperature is still 22 minus 5. And then multiply that whole value by now, since I'm running out of space, I'm just going to write it underneath. Uh, the initial, or not the initial, the uh, beta for alcohol, which is going to be 1100 times 10 to the minus 6, minus then uh, 210 times 10 to the minus 6. All right. Sorry, guys, I know this. It's all the way in the corner. But anyway, so we got 0.5 times parenthesis 22 minus 5, then times parenthesis 1100 times 10 to the minus 6, minus then 210 times 10 to the minus 6. And what do we get? Voila. So here, the the how much less water? The answer would be now 7.56, well, 5.7, I guess, times 10 to the 10 to the minus 3. And that would be in liters. All right, in milliliters, it would be 7.57 milliliters less. All right, so then you can also answer the question, well, how much water would have overflowed, right? Then it's just the difference between this number and this number, and it would have been, you know, what is that, about two milliliters, all right, if water would actually overflow, but it's not the question. It says how much less water would overflow. All right, so anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more questions. Take care.